Hello, thank you for joining us on Court TV News at 7. I am Frank Omalape. Lagos State Governor Babatunde Fashola has called on Nigerians to vote for all candidates of the All Progressive Congress in the February 2015 general elections. Fashola will make the appeal at the Korodu Mega Rally says voting out the PDP at the federal level is the only way to rescue the country from the current economic and security woes. A correspondent, Abiola Luwale, was there and the report is presented from our studios. Less than a month to the general elections, political gladiators across the different parties are crisscrossing the length and breadth of the country with aim of selling their programs to the electorate. The Ikorodu mega rally of the APC is to galvanize support for its presidential candidate Mohamedou Buhari, the Lagos gubernatorial candidate and other flag bearers of the party. Addressing party faithful, Governor Fashola maintains, voting for the APC is the only way to liberate the country from the shackles of what he called underdevelopment and insecurity. They want to increase tariff on imported vehicle. What that means is that when you buy vehicles for public transportation, you are going to pay 70% duty. Is that in the interest of transporters? No. Have they finished Lagos Ibadan Expressway? No. Have they done Bini on the Expressway? No. Do you see my 12 in Korodu Road? Yes. Do you like it? Yes. Do you want more? Yes. The Lagos State APC governorship candidate, Akiwumi Ambodi, promised that he voted into power, he will continue the developmental strides of the current administration. From 2007, Governor Raji Fashola has been so fantastic that we have continued to grow in leaps and bounds. Now what do we want in the next four years? Do we want try and error? Do we want them to come and do it the way they are doing Abuja? So what should we do? We must vote APC. You know, we brought so much to the road construction in all the axes in Nikorodu. We are going to improve on it. We'll go further to the inner roads. As the day of the election draws close, it is expected that the electorate will be bold enough to vote for politicians with meaningful programs to turn their lives around. <laughs> While APC chieftain and senator representing Kuala Central Senator at this tweet, Bukala Saraki, has urged Nigerians to vote en masse for Muhammad Buhari in the All Progressive Congress for what he describes as better management of the country. Speaking at the flag off of the party's campaign ahead of February election, Saraki says Nigeria needs a good manager at the center, adding that the PDP has failed Nigerians thus making APC the only party with all the resources to move the country forward. You promised equality. Is there equality today? You promised power. Is there a right today? You promised a fight of corruption. Is there a change today? You promised to for all our youth. Any job today? We are talking about who makes Nigeria better. Nigeria has to be better. For many years, Nigeria must get better. And it's time for us to vote for that party and for that person that will make Nigeria better. It is a belief that Nigeria will only be better under a party that led by ABC. Government of APC, led by Muhammad Bukhari, and in the Quarry State, having a governor, Abdul Pachaya, led as a governor. The All Progressive Congress has said uh, a Mad Bella University teaching her speech to has discredited the purported report that its presidential candidate, Muhammadu Buhari, has cancer. This, according to the party's presidential campaign organization, so shows that the trending purport credited to a source in the hospital is fake and disdainful. 
It is said in a statement by its spokesman Garo Bashehu that Buhari has not visited the teaching hospital in the last five years while wondering how the same hospital could have diagnosed him with cancer three months ago. The APC spokesman also insisted that the Dr. Bala Mohammed, who was said to have signed the report, is not on the staff list of the hospital. He added that the letter had used is not regular when used by the uh, hospital. While the movement for the emancipation of the Niger Delta has denied claims that it has issued an ultimatum to ex militants opposed to the presidential ambition of Muhammad Buhari, Mendy sister that the comments published by the national newspaper on Friday did not emanate from the group. He said in a statement issued by his spokesman, Jomo Bomo, that the ex generals mentioned in the report are not part of MEND. The Niger Delta Group noted that since its endorsement of the All Progressive Congress presidential candidate, several attempts have been made to discredit it by several individuals and groups. It added that it was disappointed that the media outlet did not deem it fit to confirm the authenticity of the statement before publishing it. The Independent National Electoral Commission has released a list of 88 observer groups approved for the 2015 general elections. ANEC revealed this in a statement posted on its website. It noted that the approved groups comply with the requirements and guidelines on accreditation of observers. The list shows that 16 of the observers are international bodies, while 72 are local groups. The international teams are mainly those of diplomatic missions and foreign non-governmental organizations, including the International Republican Institute and the National Democratic Institute. A prominent among the accredited domestic groups are the Nigeria Power Association, Transition Monitoring Group, Police Service Commission, and Center for Democracy and Development. And now, with few weeks to the general elections, many Abuja residents who have been reluctant to pick their permanent voters card are now showing more interest. The human traffic at the World Offices of the Independent National Electoral Commission have increased considerably. There are also others who first they could still register for an election at least less than a month away. When INEC announced that it will be issuing permanent voters cards, Skeptics were quick to conclude that people may not pay attention to the matter until it becomes late. But the situation in Abuja is different, as INEC ward offices are now besieged by people. You know, the present exercise is very, very, very impressive. Unlike before, there was a time we were here for like four weekends, Friday, Saturday and Sunday, um, that is uh, in November. Then we hardly have like 50 in a day. But um, from December, that's after the primaries, there was a high turnout of people coming to Cairo office to collect their voters card. So from there, we were asked to come near the neighborhood in order to make it very accessible for people. And since when we started on Friday, the turnout has been very, very, very impressive. Not everyone, however, agrees with the Cherry Report on PVC collection, especially as the House of Representatives is pushing for temporary voters cards to be used for the forthcoming elections. Yeah, they, there is not a problem like that, but uh, they told me that I should go back uh, where I did it before. Where did you do it before? I did it uh, at Apple. During that period, uh, when, I, when I go out to get it in, because of, of the much crowd, the understand. So the thing has started affecting my business. So I have to stay back because of the thing. I did register my voter's card, so when the register was in school at Natural State, so they explained everything to me that I cannot collect my, if I collect my voter's card, that is where I will vote my, I will vote, and I, I'm not staying there, I'm staying at this, at Abuja, so I say when I come back, I will do my registration. When I came back, they were not doing it again, so I have to wait to another time. Also worrisome is the case of those who have already moved from their states of registration. There are also others who are seeking opportunity to register anew. My problem is that I have not registered and I want to register and I want to vote. And then more than a month now I've been moving around. They will tell me I should go to Karo. I live in Maraba. I went to Karo the other day. When I get there, I asked the woman that, look, I was directed here to come and register. And we are even many, we are more than that day, we are more than 100. 
So we stand and then the other woman came and said, no, they have stopped the registration, that we should go to INEC office. I said, I said we should go to headquarters. I was not asking her, okay, between you and the government, who is lying now? The problem is that I vote in River State, and now in, I'm in Abuja. I want to collect it in Abuja. They said I should go to River State. But INEC is insisting that only the PVC would be acceptable for the election. And with more than two weeks to the close of the new window for collection, it is likely that more eligible voters would have their cards before January 31. You're watching Court of News at 7. We'll take a break now. We'll be back shortly with more stories after this timeout. Do you join us again? From time immemorial, women have bet life, shaped character, and by extension, influenced the society. Morimu of Ife, Emoten of Benin, Queen Aminat of Zaria, all women of influence and power. Whether it's before election, after election. How ironical. Women being so powerful, yet have few grounds in decision making. I see you as a and I see you as a wife to a man. We are talking women in politics. A woman will be bold enough to stand up and say, I want to become president of Nigeria. Only on Core TV News. Glad to have you back now is Court TV News, broadcasting live from Lagos, Nigeria. For more information on our news and other programs, like our Facebook page, it's facebook.com forward slash Court TV News. You can also follow at Court TV News NG. And our YouTube page now is youtube.com forward slash Court TV, bigger space, the news. The United Nations on Friday says hundreds of refugees who have fled deadly Boko Haram attacked uh, earlier this month are uh, being sent back from Niger to northeastern Nigeria, voicing concerns the development might not be voluntary. The UN Refugee Agency said it remained unclear whether the refugees were being forced to return uh, home despite dangerous conditions. We are very concerned about uh, anybody going back, uh, any refugees going back to uh, this area of Nigeria because of the situation there. Um, uh, obviously, we have little information of what is happening inside, but uh, we, from, from all the media reports, we know that there's a lot of uh, violence and attacks happening, and uh, that's why it's very important that nobody is forced to go back. According to information received by UNHCR, the refugees were transported in nine buses to Maiduguri, the capital of Borno State in Nigeria. Another 11 buses are currently parked in the town of Gagamari in Niger's Difa region, waiting to take more refugees back to Nigeria. Given the volatile security situation in Borno State and the recent attacks by Boko Haram insurgents, UNHCR is concerned about the nature of these returns and has asked the authorities to stop this operation until there are proper safeguards and a legal framework between Nigeria, Niger and UNHCR. The federal government says it is evolving a holistic string approach to curb insurgency at a media briefing on countering violent extremism organized by the Office of the National Security Advisor in collaboration with the European Union. Governmental officials say they are exploring new approach alongside legislation to overcome the challenge. This explains that the prison will be used as an instrument of change rather than punishment. The mandate is that you must do certain programs to de-radicalize them. And the certain programs include a whole gamut of things, giving them psychological uh, trainings, educational, vocational. The religious imams must sit with them, and they must sit with them in a good and comfortable place in line with what the world has said is international best practice. We don't want to make ours different. So for this level of programs to take place, you've got to have the right facility. But like I say, it's in the yard. Those same facilities are going to be used for all inmates. And it forms a platform of training the trainers for our people. While government is trying to also improve other infrastructure, we're having platforms that we have good environment offered good classrooms, every classroom, right sports facilities. Because seeing is believing. And like 
the EU man said, I keep saying, you want to win the hearts and minds of the people because insurgency is not easy. In another development, the All Progressive Congress has congratulated President Jonathan for visiting Maiduguri, Brunei State, to meet troops battling the Boko Haram insurgency. It now wants him to make similar trips to Chibok, Buniyadi, Patiskam, and other places where the insurgents had carried out their atrocity. The party said in a statement issued by spokesman Lai Mohammed that it is only by doing so that the president can refute suggestions that his visit to my degree was meant to pave way for his impending campaign in northern Nigeria. APC also challenged Jonathan to address the issue of low morale of the troops and inadequate weaponry. And now the Plateau State Police Command has begun the map operation of illegal rams in the state. This follows the directive of the Inspector General of Police, Suleiman Abba, that all persons in possession of illegal rams in the country should surrender them to appropriate quarters. The Commissioner of Police in Plateau, Nasir Woki, issued a stern warning to all residents in the state to go to the nearest police station and give up to the arms in their possessions. The unrest that have gripped the state in the last 12 years is widely believed to have fueled the proliferation of arms across the state. Oki said that in view of the forthcoming general elections, it has become imperative that arms cannot be left in the hands of thugs in the state. The report. The ongoing silent killings in Plateau State have been blamed on the fallout of arms in the hands of bandits and thugs. In order to curb the proliferation of arms in the state and ensure safety of lives and property, the police commissioner, Nasri Oke, has read the riot act to all residents keeping dangerous weapons to willingly surrender them before they are apprehended and made to face the wrath of the law. That we should mop up all arms that are in illegal hands. He categorically gave the instructions that we should mop up arms in wrong hands, and especially arms that are in the hands of thugs. Because it's a different thing. Some people carry arms in their houses. Some thugs carry it about since electionary is coming. Mm -hmm. Election is coming. Mm -hmm. So thugs too, who have in their possession, we are appealing to them to equally surrender. If they refuse to surrender, we will get them. We will pursue them. We will go to them. Take the battle to their doorsteps. The police boss said his men have laid down strategies to retrieve the legal weapons from members of the public, keeping them. He added that those who fail to reach to his appeal will be dealt with in accordance to the law, no matter how highly placed. And if after some time they refuse, we may have we may tempted to use force to get all those arms from them. Mm -hmm. It's a matter of cordoning up, searching please seriously, and bringing those arms out. And at that stage, anybody, anybody found with arms will definitely the charge to court and prosecuted accordingly. Oki said the directive is from the highest command of the force and will be religiously followed. But so far, so far, we are appealing that those who have arms in their possession should surrender it, surrender them voluntarily. The Plateau State Commissioner of Police said nothing will be taken for granted, especially as tension mounts ahead the 2015 elections. Students of the University of Benin have given a 48-hour deadline to Edo State Governor Adam Soshomane to immediately reconstruct the institution's staff quarters demolished two weeks ago. The students said failure to carry out the action will lead to civil disobedience across the Benin metropolis. The president of the Student Union Government, Ima Fido Ikide, who disclosed this at a news briefing at the June 12 building of the Ubawa campus of Uniben, said the warning starts from Friday, January 16, 2015. Beginning from today, 16th January 2015, we are by this forum given this, given the state governor a 48-hour notice to act accordingly and equally apologizes for his action in ordering and personally supervising the demolition of the university's buildings. For the avoidance of doubt, we are also demanded that one Tony Kabaka be arrested and persecuted for mobilizing and intimidating members of the University of Benin staff. We further stated that the building in question be immediately reconstructed 
to continue accommodating affected staff pending determination of the case. The ADEV at all offices, few stations, markets, schools, banks and hospitals will be shut as a result of the civil disobedience if the state government refuses to abide by the warning. Owing to the blatant refusal of the government of Edo State to the above needful, we are constrained to inform that we shall call for civil disobedience in the state in which all officers, fuel stations, markets, schools, banks, hospitals, etc. will be closed. This is necessary to foster untold consequences. We wish to express our profound appreciation to the ASU, NASU, SANU, NATS, the NANS, and the general public for their show of solidarity and support in this noble struggle to restore sanity in our states. You're still watching the Call TV News at 7. We'll take another break shortly. We'll be back with more stories outside Nigeria. Do stay with us. You can now watch Call TV News live from anywhere in the world on our website, www.calltvnews.com. Click on Live TV on our website and watch us live. And welcome to Call TV Primetime News. To follow us on Twitter, click on Twitter icon on our website. And Facebook, click on the Facebook and YouTube to see all our previous news production. You can also watch us live on YouTube. Click Call TV, leave a space, then news. Call TV News, a 24-hour news station. Outside Nigeria, prosecutors say police arrested a dozen people overnight suspected of helping the Islamist militant government in last week's killings in Paris as U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry arrived for talks. The arrest made in the region south of Paris, including Montrange, where a young policewoman was killed in the attacks, were in connection with suspected logistical support for the shootings. 17 victims and the three attackers died in three days of violence that began on January 7 with an attack on the offices of satirical weekly Charlie Hebdo. Our carry arrived late on Thursday. He met with French Foreign Minister Lauren Fabius early on Friday before meeting with resident uh, François Hollande. A senior U.S. representatives were absent for a commemoration march held in Paris on Sunday that was attended by dozens of world leaders. Well, and it's a wrap on Court TV News at 7. Many thanks for watching. Don't forget, join us at 9.45 for our primetime bulletins. I am Frank of Malapé. Thank you for watching.